everybody. I'm Charlene Shirk, and welcome to Social Champions, where we speak to some of the most innovative thinkers in the social media space. And joining me today is my co-host from Morristown, New Jersey, Joseph Federico. Joseph, so good to see you again, sir. It's great seeing you, Charlene. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And our guest, David Breyer with DBD International, who is a native New Yorker, but now living in the Midwest. It's true. And it's That's not because true. of a witness protection program. It's totally true. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm from New York and I've lived in the Midwest and I now live in the South. So I get it. It's a nice, it's a, an opportunity to see the world, <laughs> David. So tell us what you're doing over there at DBD International. Uh, well, basically, um, you know, like I basically help companies define who they are so as to actually stand out because we live in a world that's extremely noisy. There's an amazing amount of things that sound like everything else. And to get out of that echo chamber and regurgitation space, I help clients define their difference and basically help clients around the world do that. So, so David, you know, there is a lot of noise coming out, especially through social media. We have to stop the scroll. How do you define the pain points for your clients and how do you solve them going forward? Well, the first thing is, is that is it's a very, very interesting thing. All clients are always looking at what I call the finish line. They're looking at, oh, we want more customers. We want more sales. We want more conversions, et cetera. But they fail to understand the anatomy and the breakdown that there are two things that precede every sale. There's marketing, which precedes it, but marketing is execution. But before marketing can happen, there's this thing called branding, which defines who you are and how you're different and not like everybody else. Because in the world that we live in today, different is better than better. That could not be more true. And you had mentioned AI in your answers in the survey prior to coming on the show. So how is AI for your company specifically disrupting content creation for your clients? Well, put it this way. I mean, AI, the first thing is, is, is it's like anything, garbage in, garbage out. So unless you've actually identified how you are different and not like all the other solutions that are out there, you're going to provide information and everybody's looking, oh, how can we be more efficient? How can we cut costs, et cetera, and use AI? Well, the problem is, is that they have not done their homework. You know, it's like when people used to ask me because I'm an art, I, I wasn't, I was an original artist, like with painting and art. And people said, and then when I moved to computers, people say, well, what software programs do you use? I'm like, no, 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 no. The software program isn't doing anything for me. I said, the microphone didn't make the Beatles sound good. The Beatles made the microphone sound good. So that's the point that needs to be understood. Hey, David, I want to ask you about branding. Branding is, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's like a hook, right? The brand is also part of the hook, right? You've got, to, you've got to pull people into that. And when you say different is better than better sometimes. So can you give us some examples of some just like really good hooks? Because brand used to be kind of, you know, people would get confused, the brand and the mission statement and all that kind of stuff. But really today, it, it has changed how you've got to pitch that brand, how you've got to get that hook out there. Can you give us some examples of ones that you've done for clients that you're particularly proud of? Um, well, absolutely. Like there was, there was one client that had a, a fantastic nutritional bar. Now, if you look at it, nutritional bars, you know, years ago weren't a big category, but now nutritional bars and protein bars super competitive. They fill up entire aisles in a, in a supermarket. So we, we realized, well, these guys actually had a simpler product. One, first of all, you didn't have to have a, a PhD to know how to pronounce the ingredients. All the ingredients you could pronounce, and there were like between three and five ingredients. So it's super simple. So what we came up with as an example, as a point to differentiate them besides the name, was the factor of delicious, nutritious, nothing suspicious. Bam, you immediately go, nice. You know, so, nice. Uh, so it's this, that's an example. And let me ask you this, logos, right? Everybody wants a logo. I, I, I do a, some media coaching. Everybody wants to do their logo first. And I'm always like, no, who are you? What are you saying? What are you about? Then let's talk about the logo. So what advice could you give about the, everyone wants to make the creative artwork. They want to do the fun part, but you got to do the work first to get to the logo. So can you share a little bit about what your advice would be about creating a logo? Completely, completely. It's a great question. And here's the, here's the issue. It's like you don't, you don't figure out the – if you just had to address it as, oh, a logo, blah, 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 then it's cosmetic. 
Then it's literally just, okay, what do we like? What colors do we like? What's prettier? What goes with my hair? You know, or whatever. Like it's just, it's cosmetic and it's very, very superficial. You have to start out with, okay, what is our point of difference? Because one thing that I've done, I mean, for, you know, one thing that I've done, it's, I mean, I, I covered it in my, in my best selling book where branding comes down to a forward definition, the art of differentiation. And if you handle that first as your nucleus, then you can start to use design, logo is part of design, to amplify the difference. If you understand that design and those other factors amplify your difference, then you won't get lost. It's, uh, and the reason I asked, I had a presentation with a client the other day, and she'd come to me with a couple logos from somebody else had done that she thought she wanted. So I sent some direction to my designer, and when I did the presentation to her, I did the whole brand messaging, the strategy, here's what differentiates you. We did the whole thing, you know, the SWAT, the whole thing. The very last thing we went to the logo, revisited her first two, she came with me, and then the other two that, we had, that I had done with the designer, and she like right away was like, oh, that's a much better one. That really makes sense and connects with what we're talking about. And so I, 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 right. I love that, that, that there's meaning. There should be meaning behind it, not just what's pretty or nice. And if you know what you're saying, then you have a better connect. And it's easier to create that logo. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, the bottom line is, is design has a job to amplify the point, your point of difference. Language has a job to amplify and tell the story based on what? how we are not like everyone else, how we do things either in a way that makes your life simpler, makes your life better, or ch you know, changes the game, or completely reframes what the opportunities are. So those, those are the components. It's, if you, once you understand the anatomy, it becomes so much simpler, yeah. and it also gets super exciting because now we're not no longer going, what do we think is really cool? Let's sit in a conference yep. room and actually just regurgitate with one another. That's right. Joseph, I'm going to throw it to you for the last question. Sure. You know what? You are such a font of knowledge, you know, David. So to wrap this up, can you give marketers one tip on how to navigate organic content creation going forward? Basically, here's the thing that I would say. Ask yourself this. What are we able to introduce that isn't just adding to the noise that's out there, but actually rising above the noise that's out there. We always want to provide something that add that 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 something new that's unexpected. If we're just echoing what's already come before, we're going to be a reflection of what has been in the past. We need to be ushering in the future. The way we do that is by introducing something new, something that might be disruptive, something that might bust some myths and blowtorch the crap out of mediocrity. You got to have courage. That's what I'm hearing. You got to have courage in your branding. You got to go bigger. Right. Don't go. Go home. Go <laughs> bigger. Go home. Well, David, thank you so much. We hate to we hate to end it today, but we've we've run it out of time. Uh, you've just been wonderful. Uh, you have an open invite. Please come and join us anytime. Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. Great to see you, and great to meet both of you. And Joseph, thank you so much for joining me today. As always, Charlene. Thank you so much. All right, guys. And if you'd like to learn more about what David is doing over at DVD International, if you've got the courage to go there, you can check him out first by checking us out on dailyatbrief.com. Well, I'm your host, Charlene Shirk. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Social Champions. And we look forward to learning something new with you next time. Simplify presents Addressable CTV combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.